Welcome or welcome to an episode of Any Last Words. I'm your host, Joe, and it's Friday the 13th. Peacock is going to be releasing the remake of Stephen King's novel turned 1984 film Firestarter, starring True Barrymore, which I absolutely love. Now, Firestarter is a 2022 American science fiction horror film directed by Keith Thomas from a screenplay by Scott Timms based on the novel of the same name by Stephen King. That was a lot, but that's what it is. <laughs> it's a reboot of the 1984 film adaptation of the same name, and this one stars Zac Efron, Ryan Kara Armstrong, Sidney Lemon, Kirkwood Smith from That 70s Show, John Beasley, Michael Gray Eyes, and Gloria Rubin. The film is produced by Jason Bloom and Akiva Goldsman under the Bloomhouse Production and Weed Road Picture banners, respectively, alongside Boulder Light Pictures and Angry Adam Pictures. That was a lot to say. But today, we're getting to the original 1984 film starring Drew Barrymore and some things you may or may not know about the film. So here we go. The story plot. As youths, Adam McGee, played by David Keith, and his future wife, Vicky, played by Heather Locklear, which was her film debut, participated in secret experiments, allowing themselves to be subjected to mysterious medical tests. Years later, the couple's daughter, Charlie, played by Drew Barrymore, begins to exhibit the ability of setting fires solely with her mind. This volatile talent makes the youngster extremely dangerous, and soon she becomes a target for the enigmatic agency known as The Shop, which is like a CIA government type. Yeah, we, we spoke about some real shit a couple episodes back, so I would believe this would happen. Anyway, here are 10 facts you may or may not know about the film Firestarter. Number one, all of the film's special effects were done on set as there were no CGI during this time. Everything was practical. Everything was done with the use of real fire, remote control prosthetics, wire, gas lines, and actual stunt people. But no stuntmen were actually hurt in the making of this film, which is a good thing. Number two, actor Drew Snyder got paid an additional $400 for the scene where his arm was on fire. He asked some of the stuntmen working on the scene if he'd gotten a good deal and their response was more or less no without actually telling him no. So I hope the four was worth it. <laughs> Number three, Drew Barrymore had been filmed on a soundstage for certain scenes, including the cinematic barn fire, which were shot at night because the production could not have her work all night long. They also used a little person lookalike as a double for her. Now there are like child laws, child labor laws in filming, like they can't work more than a certain amount of time. They can't work, it, it, it's a big thing. Anyway, number four, Charlie McGee was modeled on Stephen King's daughter, Naomi, which I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing. You, Charlie McGee is a sweet little girl, but she also sets fire with her mind. So I don't know what that says about his daughter. Anyway, number five, Firestarter was the first Stephen King novel published in a limited edition. King later regretted this because of the copy's precociousness and unavailability. So if you have a bunch of old Stephen King novels, like my family does, Go back and look. You might have like the first ones that were in limited edition. They might be worth some money. Keep them, you know, they were limited. Number six, George C. Scott wears an eye patch over his left eye during the final half hour of the film, which was due to an infection caused by the contact lenses used earlier in the film. The eye was not quite healed and he had to wear it to complete the film of his scenes. That kind of sucks. But I mean, I guess you look more badass with an eye patch, so why not? Number seven, prophetically, a few years before she was cast in the film, six-year-old Drew Barrymore's mother thought that Drew resembled the girl on the source's novel's paperback dust jacket. Drew once said, my mom had seen this book at the grocery store with a picture of the little girl on it and said, gee, this looks a lot like you. She said it was okay if I bought it, so I did. When I read it, I came back into the kitchen where my mom was making dinner and I said, I am Firestarter. I am Charlie McGee. But she didn't know what I was talking about. That would be kind of scary. Your child running in, I'm the Firestarter. Like, please don't. <laughs> Number eight. 
Some movie posters have a really long text that reads, and I quote, hold onto your horses because it's long. Okay. Charlie McGee is a happy, healthy eight-year-old little girl, normal in every way but one. She has the power to set objects afire with just one glance. It's a power she does not want. It's a power she cannot control. And each night, Charlie prays just to be like every other child. But there are those who will do everything in their power to find her, control her, or destroy her. Charlie McKee is Stephen King's fire starter. Will she have the power to survive? That is a very long text for a poster. That sounds like it was just like the whole poster. That's, that's fucking long. I would have stopped after the first two sentences. Like, yeah, I don't want to see this movie. Number nine. Originally, Firestarter was supposed to go under the direction of John Carpenter, but according to him, he was eliminated for the project after he received poor criticism for his part in the 1982 film, The Thing, which sucks because John Carpenter is an amazing director. So it would have been cool to see his, his view and his take as a director on it, but it is what it is. So we'll see. We'll see what the next one. Now, number 10 is one that I could not find over again. I search so many different websites for facts on these films that I, I do for you guys, um, like Wikipedia, IMDb, there's fan sites, and I, you know, I try to look all these up. Um, I read this one, I could not find it again once I was ready to write the script for this, but I had read on a site that there was a scene where she had to cry and she was unable to do it. I'm talking about Drew Barrymore, by the way. She was unable to make herself cry. So she asked one, and this is a little creepy by the way. She asked one of the older male stars to spank her so that she could cry. Now, I'm a little mer on this because it's just kind of, I mean, and this actor obliged. She's like, okay, let me, let me spank, you know, spank your ass and make you cry. It's kind of a little weird for an adult male to go, yeah, just an adult period, to say, yeah, I'll just beat this child so they can cry. But at the same time, that's kind of badass for like an eight or nine year old Drew Barrymore to say, I can't make myself do this. I know this is the only thing that's gonna work. I need this to happen. I need someone to help me <laughs> so that I can do this scene and not frustrate. I don't know, I'm kind of meh on it. Anyway, I love Drew Barrymore. She's an amazing, amazing talent. And she comes from a long line of acting royalty. If you don't know about the, the what do they call them? The Royal Barrymores. Just, it goes back to the, you know, early 1900s, her family does as far as um, acting and, you know, whatnot. So she comes from a long line of it. And Drew Barrymore kind of has like, um, she has a little bit of a wild child history. And I mean, very, very much a child because... There were some other facts that I found about this that I know were true. And I was just kind of like, ooh, very disturbing. It really is disturbing because Hollywood is disturbing. It really is, um, especially when it comes to children. I'm not going to get into that in this episode. But um, I guess the first time she'd ever gotten drunk and passed out was when she was at like the, the after party kind of deal for when the movie came out. Yeah, she got like drunk and, and passed out. So, and I know that kind of like, kind of went into a habit, if you will, after that. She hung around a lot of adults at a very young age. She partied with adults. I think she was like partying in like Studio 54 and shit, which is ugh, nuts. Um, very disturbing, but she's one of those exceptional people that just, you know, she straightened her shit out. You know, she's a, she's a, clean sober person she does right by society she's still doing her thing um and she's just living her best drew so i love drew very more she seems like she's an amazing person i'd love to meet her one day but anyway i digress so peacock i don't know what time peacock's gonna be showing this tonight i gotta go check it out i'm gonna make me some popcorn because um y'all know that i'm not big on reboots uh restarts and rehashes but you know it's got Zac Efron. How could you not want to watch that? So I'm going to go check it out for sure. I'm going to make me some popcorn. And, uh, yeah. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to get to that. I hope you guys have a fantastic Friday the 13th. 
And I hope you guys have a beautiful. I hope you guys have a beautiful weekend. I will see you guys next week for another episode of Any Last Words. If you guys have any suggestions, make sure you, that you put them down in the comment section below. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up if you liked it. Don't forget to subscribe and slash that notification bell so you never miss another episode of Any Last Words. Till then, I hope you have nightmares about me. Mwah.